So in this build, we're going to talk about a build that's useful for pretty much any endgame PvE content, but I'm specifically telling this to GMs and Nightfalls. This build will allow you to deal with champions efficiently, generate your super super quick, your stasis super, and then destroy and freeze everything on the battlefield with your stasis warlock abilities and the power of Ager Scepter. So let's talk about the components of this build. First off, for this build to be truly useful, you really need Age of Scepter. Again, to start the quest, you can refer to my other video on the subject, but once you complete that, you will need to grind out the seasonal activity until it drops, the catalyst itself. It took me around eight tries. It's taken a lot of people a lot more than that. I got a little bit lucky. Once complete, you can level up the catalyst super easy via Thrall Checkpoint or the Altar of Sorrows on the Moon. In my other video, I discuss how overpowered Age of Scepter is, but in a nutshell, it is a stasis trace rifle allows you to freeze everything and with the catalyst allows you to long press that consumes your super energy over time and do incredible bonus damage as well as freeze targets a lot easier. I'll discuss when we pull the entire build together how to best utilize it in end game content. So first off, let's talk about abilities. So first off, this is going to be using Shade Binder, which is the Warlock Stasis subclass tree. I'm going to be using Dustfield Grenade for slowing enemies. Now, you could use different grenades. I'm really going to end up using this for Bleak Watcher, but that's the thing that best synergizes what I'm trying to do. Glacial Harvest. Freezing enemies leave shards around frozen targets. Higher tier targets create more shards. Bleak Watcher. Turns your grenade into a handy frozen turret. We've all seen it. You all love it. Now, from a Fragment's perspective, I'm going to start with Whisper Rhyme. When you pick up shards, you grant a small percentage of overshield. When you pick up more shards, you gain more. So, you pick up more shards, you actually then get a bigger overshield. And you can check on this pick. I picked up shards, it granted overshield, and when I punched an exploder, it actually protected me. So, that's where it can come in handy. I'm also going to do Whisper of Chains. Being near frozen enemies protects you. In this clip, I'm gaining super energy as part of my build. And as part of that, I'm freezing enemies. When I'm near them, I'm actually gaining resistance that allows me, because you can tell here I've, I've made a bad mistake in Gambit and I'm pretty low on health, but I'm able to stay in the fight and resist primarily because of the resistance ability that I have from this fragment. Whisper of Bonds, you gain super energy from defeating frozen targets. Again, I'll show how this synergizes again really well with the rest of the build later. But again, you can tell I'm freezing a lot of stuff, so obviously I'll get super energy back. And then Whisper of Shards, Shattering Stasis Crystals, Boost Grenade Regen. This will allow me to get my Bleak Watchers quicker. Now, this one was one I put in the last second. You could go a couple different ways of this build. There might be some other things, depending situational when you get into a GM. Maybe there's something you want to do a little bit differently. But I do think this is a value. Now, let's talk about mods. So first off, on my headpiece, I'm putting on Hands On Twice. This allows me my melee kills grant super energy. And I'm trying to gain super energy as quickly as I can with this build. Font of Wisdom. I gain super regen ability. That is time. So this is basically like taking your intellect up to 100. And it's time for a short period of time, but I'll tell you how we can make that better here in a minute. On my arms, I put whatever mods for champions I need and elemental shards. This requires stasis armor, but allow you to grab shards and turn them into elemental well abilities. So you can tell through most of this build, I've been talking about picking up shards. So the shards will, will help me get an overshield. They'll help me do all sorts of other things. But the additional thing here is they will proc any of my mods I have that are elemental well focused. So for instance, like the Final Wisdom I just did above, that'll actually, by picking up a shard, I will immediately start proccing Font of Wisdom and be able to regen my super quicker. Again, since there's a ton of shards that I get from basically doing ever, anything, you can see there where this really comes in handy. On my chest, I do Mantle of Bantle, Battle Harmony. So that gains super energy on elemental weapon takedowns. All of my weapons in this build are elemental, so I'm constantly gonna be getting super energy, right? And that pairs really nicely with the fact that when I freeze targets with some of my, and I'll talk about this later, my stasis abilities, I'm also going to get super energy from killing those as well. Font of Wisdom, I get extra regen ability that is time. Wait a second, I just talked about that, right? How could I do that second? Let me talk about that, how I can do that with some of the new mods here in a second. On my legs, I'm going to do elemental time dil dilation. This allows all mods that are timed abilities to stack. So that Fauna Wisdom I was talking about earlier, now stocks twice. So I have two of those plus this. That basically gives me almost infinite regen because I'm going to be picking up shards all the time. So I'm never not going to be in a position where I'm not regening my super. Fauna Might, extra damage when I pick up a shard, which again turns into well, when I use a stasis weapon for 10 seconds. So that's going to be useful with the fact that I'm going to be running a lot of stasis weapons. And I'll talk about that in a second where I'll be able to do extra damage because I'm picking up shards all the time 
this will be proccing a lot. I'll also be using Thermoclassic Strike Melee Ability Stun Overload Champions. This allows your charge melee on the Warlock to stun champions. Also, Resonant Siphon. When you remember your fire team stun a champion, you gain Stasis Ability Energy back. With this, you can essentially stun champions, which gains you ability energy, which gives you your melee back. So you can basically do this infinitely. This is allow you to easily be able to deal with overload champions and other champions, but primarily overload champions to the game. More importantly, with overloads, you will, won't need a weapon to cover them since with the other mod, you'll be able to take them out. And as you can see, you can basically just infinitely spam them, spam them, spam them, and take them down really quickly. And overloads to me are some of the most annoying champions in the game. So this really helps out and again, frees up a weapon slot. So then your weapons. Obviously, the obvious choice is Aegir's Scepter. It literally allows you to destroy everything in front of you. And when you have a full super, it'll allow you to do bonus damage and store your super whenever there's time. And that's the one thing you need to think about with this. With this weapon, not like you do all the other things, but when you deproc it, you basically keep the amount of super energy that, that you have at that time. So this almost acts like a, a saving bank for your super that you can then level up again with portions of this build. Now, in addition to that, you saw earlier in this video how easy it was to take down overloads, but even with barriers where you're gonna have to swap between weapons, this weapon, even if it's not powered out, will easily allow you to take barriers down between swapping between that and maybe your, your auto rifle. Fairly easy, even if it's not completely powered up. And of course, the main purpose for this, when you have your super and you flip it over to super you know, damage mode, any mid-range boss is easy picking with a super naval weapon. If you need quick burst damage to take out a boss, this weapon will destroy pretty much anything. Since I am buffing stasis damage with all of might, I run the trial stasis linear fusion rifle in my heavy, and I have one with Vorpal, which will add additional DPS to the damage. And then round it out with whatever you need for champions, shields, whatever you need for that particular encounter. Because again, one thing with GMs you have to be you have to keep in mind is that you have to be flexible because each one's gonna have different shields and they're gonna have different champions. So from time to time, your weapon loadout has to vary a little bit. So let's bring it together. So with this build, you'll be able to stun champions with your melee, of course, the overload champions. Get your melee back constantly and freeze things with your bleak watcher turrets. With the aspects I've laid out, you will constantly freeze enemies around you. When you do this, you will gain damage resistance near them and you'll gain shards. These shards will act as elemental wells and grant you the ability to regenerate your super quicker and do additional st stasis weapon damage to opponents. Picking up shards will also grant give you a percentage of overshield that will protect you in case you are overextended or have to go into fray to get close-up combat, especially in GMs. You will get your grenade back ability back quicker, which will spawn more bleak watchers. You will also be able to constantly stun overload champions with your melee to control what are honestly the most annoying champions in Destiny and free up a weapon slot. Also with M Mantle of Battle Harmony, your weapon kills will grant super energy and when you kill frozen enemies, this will also grant you additional super energy from this build, which means putting on Well of Potency or other super generating mods are not necessarily freeing up a mod slot. Add to this Aegir's ability to freeze and then slip into super DPS mode and then save your super so you will have the ability to freeze as well as terminate any bosses that get in your way. What I'm really looking forward to in GMs is the ability to put three stasis builds like this or my hunter stasis build into the fight and have so many frozen enemies and shards that no one will be able to touch you. I'm especially looking forward to it as this mean, this season's Grandmasters will be difficult and require every advantage to guild your title this season or to get Conquer for the first time. And that's the video, guys. If you like it, feel free to like it, subscribe to my channel, jump into my Discord, talk about your thoughts about GMs, about other things. Go over to my YouTube channel. I have a community tab. I'm frequently posting things there, looking for people's opinions. Hop over there, and I'll see you, Guardians, in the Tower.